Hey guys, JJ back. This time to chat a little DraftKings divisional round DFS. I know we got some comments about people after I posted the Yahoo video. Uh, some comments from people that wanted uh, wanted a video from DraftKings. Before I go into the slate this week, and it's, it should be a fun one with a bunch of high totals, a bunch of high scoring offenses or you know, projected high scoring offenses going at it. Uh, before I go into that, I do want to show you guys what I did last week. I don't want you to think I'm out here dogging you guys or, or, or acting like a piker. Um, I do put in a lot of money today with fantasy sports, so I want to make sure that you guys are aware. Um, okay, so if I go to my history, these are my contests from last week. As you can see, completed January 6th. Um, obviously, on the right with, with my winnings. Um, you know, you can see, I mean, there's more contests than this. I mean, I can go to the, the next page, but um, I had a decent chunk invested in DFS, probably a little north of 2,000. Uh, if I go to, uh, and that, that ended up paying about 3,800. If I go to if I go to, so we'll go to the $250 double up from last week, just so I can show you my lineup and kind of my thought process uh, in that, and then I'll go into this week's lineup or this week's, you know, thoughts, okay? So the lineup I went with last week, which placed me in what looks like tied for 13th out of, uh, I don't know, 200-something, 200 204, placed 13th. Um, so I went Andrew Luck at quarterback. I think he was he was a wildly popular play, as you can see, at 53%. Uh, Naheem Hines at 22% got me a complete dud, a zero. I can't really see it in here because my dumbass face is in the way. But if I move myself, you'll be able to see that you know Naheem, Naheem Hines got me zero. He was a popular play, uh, and I really liked him. I felt like you know he'd be getting all the passing down work. That wasn't the case. You know sometimes you take your L's. Uh, but he was very cheap, which allowed me to get in other big guys that I wanted. Um, Lamar Miller, only 34% owned. I really like that spot for him. Now, granted, did I, pre did I predict he was going to catch eight balls? No. But, you know, game flow, game flow uh, brought him into that situation. Um, but I did feel like he would get in the end zone. He did not. Uh, but, again, for me, it was his price. Um, let me see if you click and if they'll give me his price. Uh, 4900 so you know I really like the price um, his price point at you know based on the slate running back was a little of a disgusting position uh, outside of Zeke so uh, when Kiki uh, QT and you know that was a big one for me uh, loved him loved him in the spot he's played very well when he's been healthy I was surprised he was only 34 percent although I was figuring he was gonna be a lot more chalky than that but he was not um, so he helped DeAndre Hopkins was very chalky at almost 80 percent he didn't do much, but again, it didn't matter when a player like that is that high owned. Not going to be a big deal if he duds on you. Now, the other one I really liked was Alshon Jeffrey. Uh, only 8%. To me, that was kind of wild. I found after the fact that everybody really went Aglahor. Aglahor was extremely popular. A lot more popular than I would have anticipated. Um, I know he had those few good games, but at the end of the day, you know, Jeffrey's the better receiver for that team, and his price was down uh, where it was affordable. And, you know, for me, I was looking for somebody with almost like a 14 to 15 point floor. I felt like Jeffrey ended up at that floor. Um, but he definitely had a shot, you know, to get in the end zone. I know he, you know, they were targeting him quite a bit. Um, and, you know, uh, Nick Foles always targets him. So I kind of loved him at that price point. Ebron, for me, was a borderline must play. Uh, granted, he was a, a high, you know, a high owned option. But for me, it just made a lot of sense. Uh, Zeke, of course, high owned, but, you know, again, made a lot of sense. Chargers defense was a, was a pretty clutch play for me as well. Uh, again, that was, that was just a price point. You know, defense made sense at the price point. Um, so I went with them, but again, that kind of wrapped up my lineup. I ran this lineup everywhere. It cashed in tournaments, it cashed in 50 fifties. Um, I think I want to be clear on is with these playoff slates, you want to make sure you're getting yourself exposure to all the big games and you're not overpaying when you don't have to, um, look, Deandre Hopkins is a perfect example. His price wasn't great. You kind of played him because the wide receiver slate as a whole was kind of off, but you know, just a perfect example of, you know, don't get, don't find yourself in scenarios where you're, you know, climbing the ladder with player pricing. Um, that goes for all slates, not just, you know, divisional round playoffs where it's a little smaller, where you got to be a little more, you know, uh, precise with your player selections. But, uh, you know, and look, look, a guy like Naheem Hines gets you zero or got me zero. And I was still in 13th. You know, I don't know how many guys above me had Naheem Hines. I can't imagine it was a lot of them. You know, I had a good score with a guy who dudded on me um, because, you know, that guy allowed me to fit in other guys I wanted. And, and granted, he didn't work out, but I would play that. I would play Hines in that situation every time. Now, onward to this week, I'm not really high on Hines. I'm just a little afraid now the fact of how high Marlon Max usage has been. But that's okay. Um, so, okay. I will – now let's go into this week. So, if we go over to lineups. Yeah, 
goes here. 86 entries. Now I'm going to enter more throughout the week, and this is just a random you know, thing. You just you just randomly select guys to fill up the lineup. I'm sure you're all too familiar with that. Uh, again, let me move my dumbass face out of the way here. Okay. Oh, I'm still fucking in the way. God damn it. Let me move me in the right corner here. Yeah, there we go. Right out of the fucking way. Okay. So, again, you approach a site like this with, you know, a, a few different, uh, you know, methodologies, call them. For me, with these smaller slates where pricing is the most important part, um, let me just go ahead and clear this lineup completely. Where pricing is the most important part, um, you want to make sure that, first of all, you're getting your team totals, your implied team totals uh, taken care of. Like, you kind of know what these are going into it, okay? If you don't know them, the Colts are projected 26, the Chiefs 31, Cowboys 21, Rams 28, Chargers about 21 and a half, Patriots about 25 and a half, Eagles 21, Saints 29. So the Saints are your, your highest projected total. You're going to want at least one Saints player. Now, I think that goes without saying. I think everybody will have a Saints player. But I just want to be clear, you, you're going to want to have a Saints player. You're going to want to have a Rams player. And obviously, you're going to want to have uh, plenty of options in that Chiefs-Colts game. Now, when I approach you know this slate specifically, you know there's going to be a lot of scoring. Right, so everybody's going to look for you know. Oh, let me get Mahomes and or Luck in the lineup. You know, Mahomes and Luck will be very high owned. I expect Luck to be. You know, I mean, when I look at the price here of Andrew Luck at sixty two, to me that's it's a very very cost effective price for him. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm sold on him on this part yet. I will. You know, it will be between for me him and Mahomes. I'll build you guys a cash lineup through this video that you know I plan to at least somewhat use. I can't I can't promise you anything specifically whether whether I use it or not, just because there's injury notes in here. I mean Cole Beasley might not play. It does impact Dallas receivers, but Jarwin might not play. That impacts, you know, call the Dallas tight end. Um, you know, who you can end up punting if it's not him. Um, you know, there's a few other lingering injuries this week. I know Spencer Ware might come back if he does, that impacts whether or not I would play Damian Williams. Uh, so a lot of injuries that I can't predict will will or will not, you know, come to fruition. But I'll build this lineup as if you know, certain things were the case, and I'll let you know as 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 this video goes on. But as for quarterback, you know, I think I think Prescott's obviously the, he's the cheapest. Uh, I think he's a bit of a risk, though. Obviously, the fact that you know when you look at a site like this and you look at some of your quarterback options and how cheap they are, um, where you can just kind of take your safe points and move on. Now, Foles is fifty four hundred, and he's interesting mainly because of the fact that the Saints are the worst defense against the pass, and there's a lot of game flow scenarios here where you could argue, you know, Foles could have a big game. You know, if if you're thinking, oh, the Saints are going to blow them out, well, that just means Philly's going to be doing a lot of throwing, right? You know, so Foles has the ability. And look, at 5,400, if he throws, if he throws for 300 yards, which would be, you know, kind of like above, above his par, I guess. But in the playoffs, this guy plays, you know, unbelievable. He just threw for 266 at Chicago. Um, you know, throws for 471 against Houston. There's a blowout against Washington, so he only throws for 221. Goes at the Rams and throws for 270. I just feel like you have. A price point there that, that could make sense, you know. If if, you, if you're looking to one off, go off of the Mahomes luck train. Um, Nick Foles definitely makes sense for GPPs at that price. Uh, you know, just a tremendous, a tremendous amount of potential upside. I would I would consider him, you know, complete risk, high ceiling, low floor. Um, so definitely somebody you should definitely keep in mind for you know GPPs and tournaments. Jared Goff for me is a complete no no. I just I can't picture a scenario where you know he's the highest scoring quarterback this week. Dallas is going to try to slow him down, get him off the field. He didn't look good last year in his first playoff game. He hasn't even looked all that great the last few weeks. Um, you know, I mean, if you look, he's got the one game against Philly, which was really because they were playing from behind and he started to pad numbers late. Um, but other than that, I mean, he has just been very average, very, very average. Let me just get myself the fuck out of here. Very average. If you look at these these game logs, and it's just, again, very average. Here you want the safest, the safest points you can get. So for me, Jared Goff's out. Um, continue to go down this line here. Tom Brady, for me, I'm not going to play him. Chargers defense is a good defense. I know I gave you guys New England um, in my video to win. I just, I'm not a big fan of his price. Don't get me wrong, it's a cheap price for him. I'm just not a big fan of, of how of how well his upside is. I mean, you know, he's not going to throw over 400 yards and three or four touchdowns against the Chargers. I mean, I guess he could prove me wrong, but um, I don't like that price for him based on, you know, the other, the other options in the slate. Uh, Philip Rivers at 57. Again, not really on board there. Um, and then you get to Andrew Luck at 62. Uh, Andrew Luck, I feel like, will be the highest on quarterback on the slate. Uh, I know that Pat Mahomes is a safer option just because of his upside and how many 
you know, if you look at the fantasy points per game, Mahomes has averaged six more points, uh, fantasy points per game. But uh, Andrew Luck is uh, coming in at a very good price point, and you could make the argument that he will be forced to throw all game, especially if the Chiefs keep scoring. He's gonna, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna lean on Luck's arm uh, a lot in that game. Uh, Breeze for me is a no. Uh, Philly's defense has actually looked pretty good the last few weeks. Uh, while the Saints are at home, I don't picture a scenario where Breeze outscores Mahomes and Luck. Could it happen? Of course, anything could happen. But uh, you know, you could one off him in a GPP if you want, um, or play him quote unquote naked, which just means that you would play him with no receivers uh, if you wanted the Breeze exposure. But for me, again, it's going to be Mahomes or Luck. So, you know, just for argument's sake, I will go ahead and lock um, Mahomes in for now. Obviously, if I need to make changes, I will. Uh, I'm going to kind of float around here because I'm going to give you different um, uh, perspectives. Now, I want to get the defense over with because I feel like, you know, you always want to kind of just fit in defense at the end. But I've been kind of looking at this late before the video. I have kind of a good idea where I'm going to be at. Uh, for me, it's either the Chargers or the Patriots. Uh, you know, the... the you could play the Chargers at 24 um, because they've been playing really well and it's a cheap price point. Um, or the Patriots at 26. I'd probably prefer the Patriots, but I'd have to I'd have to confirm on on what specifically, um, you know, what makes the most sense price point-wise. Again, it, I'm going to squeeze one of them in. It's just a matter of where one of them puts me at. Um, so let me see. Let me see. Chargers. So I will I will just for, for sake of this now – I'll just put the Chargers in just because they're cheaper. But again, I'm not I'm not glued to them. But we'll see how this how this whole process pans out. Um, let me go around, swing around to tight end. Uh, I know I told you guys I'm going in a bunch of different orders, just because there's certain positions here that I want to discuss in granularity um, and get kind of like the, the easier stuff out of the way. Running back and wide receiver is going to be the big money positions as it usually is. Just want to make sure I get the other stuff out of the way. So here, pricing on this slate as a whole is extremely low. Okay, everybody is very cheap. I'm sure DraftKings is doing this to attract more people, maybe people that don't play DFS, trying to get a little rooting interest in the playoffs. I see why DraftKings is doing it. The problem is it's going to create a tremendous amount of variance. Um, when you make pricing as, as cheap as it is for this entire slate, you're going to get uh, you know a lot of uh, different you know variety of lineups, which is obviously a good thing. But you know you could make the argument for a lot of different players when pricing is, pricing is this cheap. It also adds a little bit more of an element of, call it, luck to it. Um, again, when pricing is this soft, um, you could go so many different directions and, you know, kind of lowers the skill in the slate itself. Um, but if I can talk to you about guys about tight end, Travis Kelsey at 7K, this is basically where he's been, about where he's been priced all season. Um, you look at his price, 7, 2, 7, 3, 7, 4, 6, 7, 7, 6, 4, 7. So this is basically where he's been at. You know, this isn't, I'm not getting him at a true discount. Um, the Colts are a good matchup for him and I'm sure, you know, Mahomes will be leaning on him in a game like this. Uh, again, not in love with the price based on the slate. I think that Kelsey is a good option. He's always going to be. But, um, you know, definitely for GPPs. Look, if the guy has a game where he goes up, goes for 100 and scores two touchdowns, you know, of course, there's going to be regret. I'm going to go ahead and, and for the sake of this video, I'm going to stay away from him. Zach Ertz at 57. Uh, Saints are pretty good against tight end. They, they typically always are. Um, I don't think he did much of anything against the Saints the first time they played. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I mean, two catches, three yards. I mean, Saints basically stop tight ends. You know, as you can see by their opponent points per game, nine. They're very good at stopping tight ends. They've been very good against stopping tight ends. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass on him. Ebron for me at 55 is a fair price, but if I'm gonna go 55, I'd much rather pay the extra 1500 and get a safer option in Kelsey. The fact that I have Mahomes gives me the the Kelsey safety blanket, if you will, where uh, I'll get points on on Kelsey touchdowns from Mahomes. Um, obviously the people who have Mahomes and Kelsey are going to, are going to go up on me there. But, uh, for me, the fact that I have Mahomes, I don't feel like I need Kelsey in this lineup. And again, Ebron is an option, but 55 is not a great price. And again, if we're talking about, you know, going for guys that, that are moving down in price versus up. He's kind of moving up. This is kind of a close to ceiling price for him. Not in love with it. Obviously if he scores great, otherwise this is, this price isn't all that good. Then we'll get... Only going to see probably between six to eight targets, and his you know yards per catch is usually anywhere between ten to twelve. So you could probably project him anywhere between sixty yards. It's just going to be a matter of how many times he gets in the end zone, whether he gets you to value. Uh, Gronkowski is a complete risk. Uh, you know, I don't even think I have to state why that is. He's been very off this year, and his you know robot knees, especially on that play at the end of the game a few weeks back in Miami. Uh, you know, the guy's basically bicentennial man these days. I'm not really a fan of him. Uh, could he go off? Of course. I'm not going to sit here and tell you. Absolutely, have no exposure to Gronk. If you're going to play a bunch of tournament lineups, you're going to have to have some exposure to him just to be safe, to protect yourself. Not a huge fan of him this week. Blake Jarwin, um, 
tight end for Dallas. Um, interesting potential there. Now, he has a high ankle sprain, um, which you'd almost basically, in my opinion, you'd almost call him doubtful. Uh, they're not they're not mentioning him yet. He hasn't practiced yet. This is Wednesday, as of Wednesday night. He hasn't practiced Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, for me, if he doesn't play, I got to think, you know, Dalton Schultz, is probably minimum price. Yeah, he's minimum price. He's going to step in and be the tight end. The other tight end is Rico Gathers, who, by the way, was a power forward for Baylor. Um, you know, I guess kind of did a little bit of a career change, realizing when he couldn't fr make free throws or shoot the basketball. And he's really not, you know, overly sized enough where NBA talent really wanted him. So decides to do a little bit of a career change, and now he's a tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. He was actually a really good, really good power forward for Baylor um, you know, back when he played there. Him and Tayshawn Prince, uh, not Tayshawn Prince, uh, Prince from the uh, Atlanta Hawks, uh, played with him at Baylor. Um, Torian Prince, uh, now that it comes to me, was actually the guy I was thinking of. Uh, anyway, Rico got his other tight end. Uh, you know, he's not going to see much if any, if any, uh, you know, pass catching action. So, again, I think Schultz might be a decent option if Jarwin doesn't play. Now, if Jarwin does play, um, I do believe he's a good option. I just don't. I just can't imagine. If he's got a high ankle sprain, I can't imagine he's going to recover in a few days and be ready to go, uh, especially with the game being on Saturday instead of Sunday. Uh, so, you know, where does that leave you, right? You can go Antonio Gage, you know, Ben Watson. Ben Watson's, you know, I'm not truly all that against it, to be honest. But, however, I think, you know, for the sake of this lineup, I'm going to go ahead and say Hunter Henry is going to be a play I'm going to like. I know that they're going to they're saying he's going to be on a pitch count, which is fine. Um, this guy's a very talented tight end. Um, he's a very good tight end, uh, I believe, out of Arkansas, uh, where he used to play, obviously, college. Um, had a few good years for San Diego. He's been hurt all year. They activated him from the uh, PUP list. Um, and he is uh, ready to go. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, he might be on a pitch count, but this guy is a red zone threat. Could definitely see a few red zone targets. If he scores, if he scores, you're basically golden at this price. Um, you know, if he scores on like a 10 yard touchdown, that's eight points. He's already already basically at three X for you. I just feel like, you know, with all the things considered a tight end, um, with the price points that they that they that these, you know, uh, tight ends are, kinda kinda want to take the cheap, the cheap risk on Hunter Henry here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug him in. Uh, again, you can make the argument for a bunch of different people, but for me, that's where that's kind of where I'm going now. Let's go to running back, which we'll do before we do receiver. Um, now, Zeke, again, price ain't bad. Um, for me, this is somewhat of an issue because there's a lot of good receivers to play on this slate. And I don't know if I want to play a running back who may score, may not score. Um, you know, I love the fact of his high upside catching the ball, especially this year. You know, at 8200 it's a great price for him. Um, one of the cheaper prices he's been all year. But we'll notice as we go through this video that the receivers, a lot of the receivers are cheaper than they've been all year. So for me, I'm not in love with Zeke. I'm probably going to fade him for my cash lineup. I could definitely see the reason for him. Just um, I myself want to go in other directions. Gurley, 8000 again, a great price for Gurley. The problem is Dallas is, you know, practically the best rushing defense in the NFL, if not one of them. Um, and they just kind of halt run, the running game completely. We'll go ahead and leave Gurley off. Now, Kamara is an interesting spot here at 7300 this is one of the lowest prices he's been throughout the season uh, i think he's only been cheaper than this number twice all year so i uh you know you definitely want to keep kamara in your in your in your mind i like kamara at his price more than i like Gurley at his and more than i like zeke at his but again you know i'm trying to go with cheaper options here melvin gordon is somewhat of a risk because he, he was on and off the field against the ravens not really in, all that in love there um so i will We'll go move down to Marlon Mack. Now, Marlon Mack, for me, at his price, and when you compare it to the slate, because, again, guys, when you're looking at a lineup, you can't just look at the price of a player. You have to also look at how his price compares to the price of other players at his position. Now, Marlon Mack at 5800 I don't love this price. I remember last week me saying to myself at 6000 I really didn't like that price for him. The matchup wasn't a bad matchup with Houston. It wasn't a great one either. I don't think Houston allowed a 100-yard rusher all year. Um, and Mac, you know, went off. Now I'm not. Now the problem with Mac is he's so like volatile. And you know, you might look at the numbers here and go, "Wow, three of his last four rush over 100." I'm sure he will be a very chalky play. And you know, and there's definitely enough of a reason for me to warrant playing him. Uh, and I will definitely. He just he does come at a risk. Okay, he does come at a risk. He was running the ball well, that's why I think he felt felt he saw a lot of snaps last week. That could change at any time. They could, you know, they could be in a lot of third and longs where they bring in Hines, who's a better pass catcher. But again, I, you know, when we talk the price point, I kind of like what we're at there um, with him. So 
We're going to play him. He's going to probably be very chalky, I would assume. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and slot him in, uh, especially with a great matchup against the Chiefs. The other running back I'll leave off for now because I want to talk about receivers. Um, and I don't want to kind of go down that running back list right now anyway um, for a few different reasons. But when we talk receivers, you look at this slate. Now, Michael Thomas is 7,900. Now, Michael Thomas, the big thing with him, uh, here's why I feel he's a he's a borderline must play on this slate. And I think he's going to be very popular anyway. But he's a borderline must play for me, first of all, because his price is, again, down. As I said, most people, if not all, all people on this slate, their prices are down. He has been cheaper than 7,900 three times this entire season. Um, and, look, you could argue this is a home run matchup. Not sure if you watched the Philly-Chicago game, but Allen Robinson kind of, like, resurrected his career against that Philadelphia secondary. Uh, Michael Thomas played this team a few weeks ago, and you might not look, you might look at the numbers and be like, oh, you know, paltry, four for 92 and a touchdown. Not great. Not amazing. But, um, you know, that was a complete blowout. This is a different Philly This is a different Philly team. I do expect Philly to be scoring in this game, uh, which will definitely give Michael Thomas more opportunities. Now, this was, I think, one of the more poor performances he's had at home, only with 19, and then he had, you know, the, the, the seven-point fluff against Atlanta at home. But... For the most part, if you look at his splits, um, look at the home and away differences, right? Like at home, 24 fantasy points per game. Away, 17. Now at this price, what does he need to get you? He needs to get you 24, 3x. 3x is what we're looking for here, guys, for cash lineups. He gets you 3x with gold, and he's averaging over that at home. Uh, I just think he's he's a lot. He's, you know, he's he's obviously getting um, more more catches, more balls thrown to him, and you know he's obviously uh, scoring in the end zone uh, more at home. So I. Um, I definitely like Michael Thomas. We're going to go ahead and lock him in, right? Okay. Oh, imagine the clicking worked. I don't know why the hell that just happened. Oh, because it took the last. Ugh. Hold on. Let me move, my, move myself again here so I can remove these. I'm not really sure why. A little delay on the clicking. Uh, okay. So uh, we got Michael Thomas in there. Again, he's going to be popular anyway. Um, I'm not going to stray away from that or say to you, oh, look, you know, we're going to be, you know, so isolated with Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is going to be popular. Don't let anybody fool you. Uh, okay. Now, Tyree Kill, again, this goes back to my Pat Mahomes. Like, I have Pat Mahomes. It protects me from Tyree Kill. Tyree Kill could be popular at this price. He's a little bit more of a GPP play for me. I would never really want to ride him in cash anyway just because of his, don't get me wrong, big play potential. Could do, could do wonders for you. Just not in love with the price. Even though the price is cheaper than what he's been, I don't like the, the ups and downs of his game logs. I mean, all you have to do is kind of look here, you know, 31, 13, 8, 25, uh, 6, 46, 35, 12, 10. It's kind of all over the place. Um, don't get me wrong, he could have a great game in this spot. Just not really all that in the mood to uh, deal with the highs and lows of Tyree Kill in this spot. And I have Patrick Mahomes who's going to isolate, who's going to neutralize that for me anyway. I'll get points if Tyree Kill scores. Unless they do like an in reverse, which I guess is possible, but I'll take my chances. Now, T.Y. Hilton at 67. If you're going to make the argument that the Colts are going to be playing from behind most of this game, T.Y. Hilton has the opportunity to catch a lot of deep balls, a lot of, a lot of those 30, 40 yard, you know, catches where he's just kind of floating in the middle of middle of the field. And Andrew Luck, if anything, he showed in that Houston game. He has no issue throwing the ball up to T.Y. Hilton. Now T.Y. Hilton had that huge first half and kind of slowed down afterwards, mainly because you know the whole Colts offense kind of slowed afterwards. They went to this like, you know, slowly let's run the ball on first and second down. We'll kind of throw for the a first down on third and long a few times, but for the most part, they were running the, running the clock out that second half. This game will most likely not be the case. They're going to be forced to throw all game. I love the fact that T.Y. Hilton is 6,700. This is a tremendous price for him, and again, you're always looking for price points and spots. Um, T.Y. Hilton at this price, I really like. Now, Cooper is in that same area. You can make the argument for him. I'm not against it. just want to be clear. Uh, I prefer T.Y. Hilton, so I'm going to go ahead and plug T.Y. Hilton into here. clicking again um, okay let me remove Cooper okay so now we have uh, Thomas Hilton okay so now we scroll down here and now Keenan Allen 6400 this is insane this price is insane now I know you look at his game logs six targets seven targets eight targets all shitty games, 7 points, 10 points, 10 points. Here's the thing. Baltimore was two of them, best pass defense in the NFL. Denver, at Denver, was the other one. who You know, Denver was actually, believe it or not, very respectable at home, especially defensively. Honestly, none of those games mean shit to me. The fact that he did, did nothing in those games doesn't mean anything to me. Um, when you look at his price, okay, 
he has not been 6400 all season long. This is the cheapest I've seen him all year. This is the cheapest I can remember him being, not even just this year. This is extremely cheap for him. If you look at from weeks, you know, weeks one to 14, this guy is just money for, you know, solid, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18 points. Now, if he scores, he's definitely going to get you value at this number. Uh, and he can get you value even without scoring at this number. Uh, you know, look, Patriots defense is good. The thing is, Philip Rivers loves to target him. Again, you can't look at his last game. It was the Ravens and the, the, the game flow had the, the Chargers with a big lead. They were running the ball a lot, running clock. Keenan Allen is a great play in this spot. I love this price for him. It's not that I love the fact that he's going to have a great game. I love the price. And ultimately, that's what you always have to look for. When you look through here, the fantasy points per game, I get it. He's a better player at home. Still averaging 15 points on, on the road. And again, this is a game they're going to be at least going to be forced to somewhat throw, you know, especially if you think the Patriots are going to score at all. I mean, the Chargers are going to have to score, and he's going to be relied on to, 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 to catch a, a bunch of balls. And he's you know just a safe guy to play. So give me Keenan Allen here. Now, Julian Edelman is another interesting play um, because he's kind of similar to Keenan Allen and how many balls he catches. You could play him over Keenan Allen. I'm not against it. I just feel like Keenan Allen has much more upside. So I prefer Allen against, uh, against Edelman. But Edelman is not a bad option, uh, especially in cash games specifically, just because of his upside. I mean, look, when you click on – when you go through Edelman's game logs, I mean, you know, the guy is consistent. Five balls, six balls, seven balls, nine balls, 70 yards, 70 yards, 90 yards, 80 yards. No Josh Gordon. Um, definitely a decent spot for Edelman. Not against it at all playing Edelman over Keenan Allen. Me, again, I prefer Keenan Allen. But no no issue I have whatsoever with you guys playing Edelman there. Um, now, the other receiver uh, – or the flex spot, sorry. Uh, scroll down here, Robert Woods. <laughs> Again, this pricing, like this whole slate is just so soft with the pricing. Robert Woods at a whopping 5,900. Keep in mind, guys, this is a guy that's averaged basically 17 points a game. He's averaged that. Okay, now I get it. Dallas' defense is good. But Dallas's secondary can be at times a bit shaky. You can't really run on Dallas, but you can throw at times on Dallas. Um you know, you're going to get a guy that's going to be targeted anywhere between seven and ten times. Don't let the San Francisco game fool you. Um, I'm not concerned at all that he had his worst game of the year against San Francisco. He gets targeted a lot, um, and, you know, it's a high-efficiency catch rate for him as well. Uh, I just, for me, you look at these numbers. If he gets into the end zone, you're golden. Uh, this is, again, we're talking price point. Cheapest he's been. Almost all year. The reason he started out lower was because, you know, I don't think anybody anticipated him having this good of a year. And, you know, Cooper Cup being out has definitely shot up his his target volume as well. I just, again, we're talking price point, guys. 5,900 is a very, I mean, 5,900, he can get to value, you know, I mean, what does he need? You know, seven, you know, seven for 90 was at 16. Um, you know, and if he happens to break over 100, he'll well get, well get you over value. I mean, if he goes, you know, if he scores, even if he goes, you know, uh, six catches, 60 yards, and scores. That's 18. Um, and would that be that unrealistic? So for me, Robert Woods is, is, is a very good play at his price. We're going to go ahead and lock him in. Let's see where we're at, right? So we're at now we're at left with 5,100. We can perfectly fit in Damian Williams now. Damian Williams, of course, is a risk. He's a risk because Spencer Ware might play. If Spencer Ware does not play, Damian Williams should practically be in all your lineups. There's, I mean, there's really no reason you shouldn't be playing Damian Williams. Spencer Ware is out. Damian Williams will be heavy chalk, and as he should be. So when we break down this lineup, if we look at it um, in a bit of a different light, because this is a game, this would be a lineup I would consider for a cash game lineup. You know, you got Mahomes at the top. You could argue for luck. I'm fine with that. If you want 800 to go somewhere else, uh, Marlon Mack, uh, which gives you that, you know, at least that Colts running back. I, I feel like if you're going to go Mahomes, if you're going to go luck, you need Damian Williams. If you're going to go Mahomes, you need Marlon Mack. You need somebody on the Colts that can get you a lot of touchdowns, whether it's luck or Mack, vice versa. Um, and, you know, we're going with Damian Williams. I mean, the, the Chiefs are projected the most points in the slate. So I have the Chiefs starting running back, the Chiefs starting quarterback. Again, we're talking cash lineups here. This is the highest total on the slate. If Spencer Ware does not play, Damian Williams is an awesome fit there. Um, Michael Thomas, again, you want that Saints exposure, and I prefer Michael Thomas over Alvin Kamara um, for the reasons I stated before. Michael Thomas is that is much better at home, um, and uh, you know I would expect him to have a good game against a shaky Philadelphia secondary. T.Y. Hilton is purely a price play. Um, again, kind of gets me kind of away from or um, gives me the opportunity to um, 
get exposure against Andrew Luck. So obviously he's going to be going after that Andrew Luck. I can play T.Y. Hillen if he throws a large, you know, big pass to T.Y. Hillen. I'll get those points. So I'm happy there. Um, and again, it gives me the, the, the Colts best receiver and the Colts running back. You know, give me a little variance in that aspect. Keenan Allen is purely a price point play. I am not against at all. You removing Keenan Allen for Julian Edelman. I actually don't mind that. I really don't mind it at all. I, you know, over the, as, as the week goes on, I might convince myself to go in that direction. But Keenan Allen, for me, that is the cheapest price he's been. And I just love the volume he gets and how Philip Rivers will, you know, rely on him in, in nearly all situations. He can easily pad up, you know, eight, nine, ten catches, especially if they're playing from behind. Uh, Hunter Henry is just a pure price point play. If, if, and I will state this again, if Jarwin does not play, okay, Jarwin does not play, we're going to go Schultz, okay, Jarwin is out, which again, I'm kind of expecting him to be out, I just don't want to, I don't want to say something now, it doesn't happen, if he's out, I'm going to go Schultz, I'm going to go Schultz over Hunter Henry, um, that will give me 300 extra for me to maybe do something different with the money, um, like with the extra 300, uh, let me think, if I went for 300 extra, if I went off, hmm. I guess you could do a few different things, but ultimately maybe maybe you go maybe you go from Hilton to Edelman, and maybe we upgrade um, Woods. You have a few different options you can do, and I want to give you like all the A to Z options. But again, if if Jarwin's out, Schultz for me is is, is a really good play. I'll leave Henry in there just because I know this video has been running long, much longer than I wanted it to run anyway, but. Um, Ultimately, and again, Robert Woods gives you that Rams exposure. I don't want to play Gurley. I'm a little bit afraid. I know that he's not really dealing with much of an injury, supposedly, uh, even though you know he didn't really practice in limited fashion. C.J. Anderson played really well. I'm wondering if you know they'll they'll spell Gurley for a few extra snaps with C.J. Anderson how well he played. Um, so I'm not in love with Gurley. That's why I don't really want that as the exposure. But I will take Robert Woods, much cheaper price point, and the Chargers defense, which is just really a value play. Don't get me wrong, the Patriots at 200 more. Might make more sense, but, you know, again, these are two defenses you could argue that have the same percentage of having similar type of numbers and the charges are cheaper. So basically wraps up the video. I know I wanted to get you guys a video where I broke down a bunch of different, you know, looking at this slate from a bunch of different angles. I hope I provided that for you. You know, I broke, broke down each game specifically, broke down a lot of player price points. Remember, guys, don't get yourself entrapped in the highest totals. Like, oh, my God, I'll need, you know, I need four Colts or I need four Chiefs or I need three Saints. No, no, no. It's all a price game. It's all a price game. You got to find what makes the most sense. Now, you know, looking at this lineup, probably Andrew Luck makes a little more sense at 6,200. Um, but again, you know, I'll tinker with this as the week goes on. Any questions you have, feel free to drop in the in the comment box. I really like this lineup as is. But again, you know, there'll be other things that could that could make this change. Um, you know, if Jarwin's out, um, if Ebron's out, like I know Ebron's. You know, supposedly questionable, but you know he's probably going to play. If Spencer Ware plays, Damian Williams becomes a huge risk, so I wouldn't play him anymore. So again, this is earlier in the week, but I wanted to get you guys all the content and kind of like my thoughts on the whole slate as a whole. Uh, so I hope you found it informative. You know, subscribe to the channel. I'll get you guys you know more more daily fantasy sports videos as we go on, as you request them. Uh, I've been playing daily fantasy sports for plenty of years now. Um, you know, along with the sports bets. So uh, any questions you have, feel free to comment below and uh, you know subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uh, and again, guys, thanks for viewing.